Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update on this Monday. Winter is not done with the West, even though today is an absolutely spectacular day um, in Colorado. And it, it's also beautiful up in Wyoming. Here are some live cams up there. So T10, the bottom, obviously we're melting snow at the base. You got grass showing. The upper mountain still has a ton of snow on it, though. Um, let me take you, though, to Cody Bowl. Um, so to, obviously, I mean, it's just caked in snow. But I show you this camera up in Jackson Hole because I'm forecasting one to two feet of snow for the Tetons. Um, I'm looking at my notes. This is mainly going to happen between late, comes in late on the 4th, and it may continue all the way through the 10th. Um, and here's, here's an idea of how the freezing level will shake out with this. So they're going to be high on the 4th, probably up to 13,000 feet with a freezing level. But then they drop dramatically. The 32 degree line maximizes on the 5th uh, at 8,900 feet. So big drop and then it drops even more. On the 6th, 5-6, drops to 7,700 feet. So that's how we're going to accumulate snow. Cold front will drop the freezing level. We'll bring in the moisture. We'll get some more graphics. And potentially between late on the 4th and the 10th, we could drop 1 to 2 feet of snow there um, across the Tetons. All right, so to my uh, bullet points, two storm systems between now and the 10th. Most of the action for the Intermountain West comes on or after the 4th through the 10th. Heavy snow, I've got heavy snow in Wyoming, Montana, and also parts of Utah, believe it or not. The second low will have a lot of wind with it. It'll bring a pretty strong jet and have a lot of wind energy. Um, 8, 9, 10 across a lot of the Intermountain West. The first low is sitting in California right now, and it's moving very slow, just so you know. I want to look down the, uh, down the road. This is 510, the jet pattern. Look at the dip in the jet over Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. I've got snow, some snow for Colorado, not nearly as much as Wyoming, Montana, Utah, but look at that dip in the jet for the 10th of May. Pretty impressive. Okay, let me show you how this plays out as far as uh, forecast radar and satellite. So let's move it into the second. Here we go. Look at that cutoff in California. Snowing through uh, the Tahoe area, the, C, uh, the Sierra. Then it begins to make its move into the interior. On or after 5-4, brings snow through Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, a little bit in Colorado. But that's not the main low. That will simply drop the snow level and the freezing levels down. You can see the second low. That's the main low into the Pacific Northwest. That will bring even a little more cold air. So the first one sets the stage, and then that second one will bring uh, heavier snow into the interior Rockies, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and 5'10". And here's what I'm thinking as far as totals between the first, the rest of today through the 10th. A bit of snow for the Sierra, high up. These are high snow levels in the Sierra. But then you look at the numbers. They really stand out in the Wasatch. Um, the best snow with in the Wasatch is going to be at higher elevations. Um, but even there, the freezing levels will fall. In the, uh, the Tetons, again, you can one to two feet of snow. Potentially over two feet of snow for Bridger Bowl in Big Sky in Discovery at higher elevations. In the springtime, notorious um, for high freezing levels, you're going to have to be at the higher elevations. In Colorado, one to six inches, not a big deal there. Everything else is pretty light on the board. Uh, but those numbers definitely stand out uh, in northern Utah, Wyoming, and parts of Montana. Again, two storm systems, 5-1 to 5-10, but it's the first one that lays the groundwork, brings the freezing levels down. The second one comes in and takes advantage. All right, guys, appreciate you tuning in here. Um, as always, take care. Until next time.